Thank you very much. Um, good morning, everyone. I think I'm the only one who doesn't speak Hebrew in this room, so I'm sorry. And I want to also thank the, transla the translators who translated the, the whole uh, presentation just for me. So it's time now for you to, to take that if you want to follow my presentation. Uh, Okay. okay. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Clément de Maillard. Yeah. My name is Clément de Maillard. I'm a senior officer from the uh, French, as you can guess from uh, with my accent. I'm French. I work for the French Gendarmerie, uh, and I'm a second lead officer uh, working for Interpol, Interpol General Secretariat. Um, it's a great honor for me to be here and to have the, the, the opportunity to, to, uh, to deliver a presentation on this topic. I just would like to tell you uh, an anecdote, uh, a story about, uh, um, about uh, Israel. It's my second time in Israel. And the first time it was in September 2016, and I was invited to uh, deliver a presentation as well. And uh, you know the dress code, the Interpol dress code is generally suit and tie. And uh, last year, when I came to the representation, I realized that I was the only one with a tie. And when I arrived at the airport yesterday, Ronnie from Ministry of Health told me two things. The first one is, how was your trip? And the, th the second thing was, tomorrow, no need to take a tie. <laughs> so as you can see, I have no tie. But don't tell my boss, OK? Thank you. Oh, um, so, um, first of all, I would like to tell you what is Interpol, uh, because it's maybe, I, I'm sure that you know Interpol, but I'm not sure that you know how, we, how it works. Um, Interpol is the largest international police organization dealing with uh, 192 member countries. We do, not ha we do not have investigation powers, so we cannot carry out investigations, we can only um, support law enforcement entities and agencies to deal with uh, investigations and we help coordinate cases and uh, information sharing. In 2009, Interpol signed a cooperation agreement with the World, sorry, with the World Anti-Doping Agency and since 2009, uh, Interpol deals with doping uh, and as far as I know, I think Interpol is the only international law enforcement organization dealing specifically with doping. So what does it mean? Uh, it means that we deal with two different types of crime. The first one is doping, but only for countries who consider doping as a crime. And to be honest, only few countries consider doping as a crime. I mean, doping of uh, professional athletes and uh, doping related crimes. So for example, we have been uh, dealing with um, the uh, so-called IWAF case. So the corruption case uh, involving the executive uh, staff members of the International Athletic Federation, along with the Russian scandal. And the second aspect of our, our um, job is to deal with the traffic in performance enhancing drugs, the uh, doping products. So I'm not going to talk about the first aspect of my job. I'm only, I will only focus on the second aspect. So um, it's quite difficult to explain what is, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's quite, quite difficult to explain uh, how to, to fight against uh, um, uh, PED trafficking effectively, as it's quite difficult to explain how this kind of trafficking works. Um, so, and I think if we want to fight against that effectively, we need first to understand. So that's the reason why my presentation will be more focused on how this kind of traffic work. And then afterwards, at the end of my presentation, I'm gonna try to uh, provide some, some bullet points regarding how we can fight against that uh, uh, effectively. So the first point will be uh, raw materials, manufacture and supply. The second point will be dedicated to uh, finished products production and distribution. And uh, I will finish my presentation with uh, the main topics is how to 
deal with uh, uh, this, um, uh, how to uh, address this issue properly. The, the starting point of this trafficking is raw material production and supply. Um, it's both very complicated and very simple. Um, very complicated, very simple, because it's uh, uh, like all the other uh, uh, um, uh, drug trafficking, uh, traffickers need raw material and to product finished product. Uh, so it's quite easy to understand that we have to focus on raw material. Uh, but it's very complex because the, the, the organized crime groups are very smart and they try to complicate the process just because they don't want law enforcement to understand how it works. So I'm going, I'm going to try to explain you very briefly how they handle this. At the, at the head of the, uh, the, the, the supply and production and supply chain, you have the organized crime group. They establish a lot of uh, firms, companies, um, with our uh, shell companies in order to um, to hide their activities. They deal with hundreds of, of websites uh, which drives to only uh, a few sell representatives. These representatives deals with, deal with the, the orders you can make on the internet. Then they pass the orders to the factories the factories uh, uh, distribute the products um, uh, um, at the domestic level, which is then distributed to end users. Uh, it's also quite complicated to follow the money because they use a lot of uh, 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 shell companies. This is an example of the way they smuggle uh, this, the, the, this kind of products. So it's, this, this is an example from China. This is food package. And this is uh, um, from a mail sent by Chinese organized crime group to purchasers, customers, saying, look at how professional we are. So this is an example of what, they, what we do. You know, for example, here, they explain how they the, the, um, the package, they make the package. And if you want to buy some raw material, it's very simple. No need to go through the dark net. You can go on, the, uh, on Google. You just tap buy raw material steroid or raw steroids. Then you can find this website, buy raw steroids. You, can, you see how simple it is. And then you can find the powder. So hop, it's very easy. This is, this is an example also of uh, uh, raw material seizures. We, this example is from Sweden, I think. So when we talk about raw material, it's not only powder like this. It's, it can also be um, uh, material for laboratories or um, some ampoules, vials, these kind of things. Regarding finished products production, it's quite difficult to understand how the market works because if you, for example, uh, uh, want to understand how the cocaine trafficking works, it's quite easy to understand how it works. We know that it's produced in South America, distributed in America, in Europe, through Africa sometimes, but it's quite easy to understand the main routes and, and the main production, the, the production. When dealing with uh, uh, doping products, it's much more complicated because no one knows how it works. Um, so we identified three different types of production, but this is only based on the intelligence we gathered at Interpol. I don't, I don't pretend that this is the reality of, of, the, of the, the market. Um, the first type of product we find in, in the black market are uh, uh, pharmaceutical medicines, legitimate ph pharmaceutical medicines, which has been diverted from the, the, the blood, for, from the legal market, for example, stolen in, uh, in hospital or diverted from storage or during the shipment. Um, there are 
very expensive in the black market because uh, uh, purchasers or customers know that it's a very high quality, but it's also uh, um, it's also counterfeit. It generally represents five percent of the products we can find in the black market. The second type of products we find in the black market uh, are uh, produced in underground laboratories. It represents sixty percent of the black of the products we can find in the black market. Uh, it's generally distributed in the in the domestic for the domestic market. And the last one is. Um, Legitimate, uh, it's produced by uh, uh, legal pharmaceutical companies with criminal intents. Let me give you an example. Um, some countries do have lack of legislation in terms of production. And um, some people, for example, we have an example of the, 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 um, the former uh, head of an organized crime group who was based in Romania. He was the head of a laboratory which was called uh, British Dragon. He escaped just before a, a police operation and he, he, he said, okay, I'm a trafficker, I'm a criminal. Uh, what if I do exactly the same thing but in a country where my activities are legal? So he decided to move in another country, Eastern Europe, and to develop exactly the same, the same activity. So now he is the uh, CEO uh, of a pharmaceutical company, and in this country, he is, he, 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 his activities are legal. Um, so it's quite difficult when you're a police officer or when you're a customer to know what you have in your hands when you have seized the product of when you have purchased the product where the product comes from because you also have to take into consideration the fact that each of them these countries or each of these products can be counterfeit so this is an example of a typical underground steroid lab uh, this is an example of a lab which has been dismantled in the US this is also an underground lab which is more sophisticated it's also in the US, in the United States. You can see here that it's very sophisticated. This is an example of a legitimate uh, legal pharmaceutical company. Uh, it's in Moldova. The name is Balkan Pharmaceutical. Um, I invite you to go on the internet and to go on YouTube. You type, you, you write uh, uh, um, uh, Balkan Pharmaceutical and you will see a very exciting uh, uh, video about the, the infrastructure they have, which is very high quality. And uh, I remember a documentary a journalist went there, went there and asked them, but obviously you are a steroid trafficker. You only produce steroids. And they say, no, we are not traffickers. And we don't produce only steroids. So the journalist said, are you kidding me? You only produce steroids. They say, no, no, that's wrong. We also produce uh, medicine for side effects of steroids. <laughs> and they said, uh, it's only for the domestic market. But I think in the world is one of the most popular products we can find, Balkan Pharmaceutical. Regarding the distribution, uh, Internet has changed the, the, the distribution uh, uh, market. Now I think the biggest major majority of the products which are distributed in the world are distributed through the internet. We can find some in fitness centers and sport clubs and also in the entourage, uh, but I think most of the products are first purchased on the internet. So the question is how to combat it uh, effectively. Um, I don't pretend that I have the, 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 the key to, 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 to be efficient. It's quite difficult. But I think the, um, we have to uh, adopt a, a, sorry, a, two, a two-fold uh, uh, approach, a bottom-up approach and a top-down approach. Um, and it's what we try to do at Interpol. So the first one, this operation, is a top-down approach. 
we, with the USDEA, the Drug Enforcement Administration, we have uh, set up, we did set up uh, an operation which was called Operation Barium, um, which uh, was, which targeted the raw material distributors, producers and distributors. Sorry, I have a problem, yeah. Um, uh, the USDA was dealing with several uh, uh, investigations in the US territory, but they identified that all the underground labs that they did, they did dismantle had drive to only one raw material supplier who was in China. So they decided to target this raw material supplier. It was a, a, a Chinese organized crime group. They had a lot of uh, internet websites distributing all, all around the world. And they, it's based on uh, uh, DEA statistics, they think that they distributed uh, approximately 90% of the raw material in the US. So the DEA collected uh, intelligence on raw material uh, in, in and distribution and purchasers and decided to, to disseminate the intelligence they had. So we established this operation and disseminated the, the intelligence to all the member countries. Uh, just for your information, this group, this organized crime group, is uh, at the same uh, level of threat in the, US, by, in the US DEA as Pablo Escobar and El Chapo Guzman used to be. So it illustrates how important it is steroids uh, in, in the US now. Based on the intelligence we get uh, from, from the Chinese group, we have been able to identify the hubs of distribution. They said, when they communicate together, they said, we have to find some hubs for distribution. So they identified some, some countries with lack of custom capacity or police capacity and with a, a lot of purchasers. And this is, in this map, the, 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 the countries which were more, more impacted by the traffic. This is just statistics about what we, what, what we did and uh, regarding the volume of money spent by countries. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm not, I can't disclose too much information regarding this operation because it's still ongoing. But uh, for example, this is another example of the cash flow we did identify. And you can see that the, 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 first, uh, the first bank uh, which was involved in money laundering was in China. But I can disclose one case, which was in Moldova, and I think it's one of the most significant cases we had, because we have dismantled in Moldova uh, an organized crime group, and they had uh, a very big underground lab, and they also had a very sophisticated counteraction equipment, such as uh, jamming, drones, uh, data encrypting devices, and we also seized uh, a lot of weapons and munitions. I just want to take uh, some, some time to describe another initiative we have, uh, which is more uh, uh, a bottom-up approach. Uh, this is the project Energia. In two years ago, we have established an initiative with the University of Lausanne because we thought that, as I told you, we have to understand the market and the black market. Uh, when we see the product, as a police officer, as custom, when you have a product in your hands, the main question we have is where the product comes from. I mean, not the country it comes from, but who did it? Was it, uh, uh, is it a legitimate product? Is it an underground product or is it a product which has been produced by a company with criminal intents in a country where there is a lack of legislation? This is the main question we have. And so we decided to establish this, this, this initiative in order to better understand the market. So we focus on four different types of information. The first one is what we call the physical profiling. Each product, each package, contains uh, pieces of information. If you take this package lonely, it does not make sense. It's not useful. 
But if you take all this information and you put it in the database, you can get a lot of information. For example, you have the name of the, the, the shipper. You have, sorry, you have, uh, you can see here, a the, the, the lot of information regarding the, the package. You can also compare, for example, uh, what is mentioned in the package with the chemical structure, the chemical signature of the product, and it's what we do with the chemical profiling, and so on. So for, we ask, we request our member countries, every time they see this kind of product, to share with us the, the information. So we, to, to, to send the information based on the standard way, and thus, we put all this information in a database. If we cross-check this information with, for example, the context of the seizures, if it has been seized in the framework of a police operation or controlled de delivery, um, or in all the information that we can have in the framework of the investigations, we can get a lot of intelligence, especially because we also deal with the internet. Internet is a very, very important source of information. And with the University of Lausanne, we have uh, an open source intelligence program, and we focus on forums of discussion. And you can't imagine how, uh, uh, how much information we can get in, this, in, in, in the internet, in forums of discussions. Because customers, they ask the same questions. They don't want to put shit in their body. They want to know what they have in their hands, and they want to know if it's a high quality, or if it's, uh, if it's counterfeit, or if it's a low quality. So they, in these kind of forums, they exchange a lot of information which can be used from, from an intelligence perspective. This is an example of um, uh, what, we, what, we, what we did. A uh, very simple example, but we, uh, we took a lot of uh, informa information from op uh, open sources and we cross-checked this information. And this is an example of uh, the products uh, which are the most popular in the in forums discussions. You can see here as well um, uh, the websites which are the most popular in the black market, in, in, in the internet, sorry. So for example here, Anabolic stories that is, is very popular. You can see here the geographic distribution of the website's hosts. Surprisingly, the US is the first. And we can get a lot of very interesting information we, that we distribute to we decimate to the uh, law enforcement entities. So the main question was how to combat this effectively. So I think we have to keep in mind three things. The first one is to continue to contribute to awareness raising against uh, doping. I think we generally uh, pay more attention to doping from a, a, a sport perspective and athlete, a pro athlete's perspective. But I think it's also a public health issue, which is not addressed uh, properly, I think. Um, I think, you know, I've been working f four years at Interpol dealing with anti-doping, and to be honest, only few police uh, uh, bodies and, and customs bodies deal with doping. This is not a police priority, definitely not. So I think we have to encourage the fight against doping and doping uh, trafficking. The second point is encouraging information sharing with stakeholders. Um, I know that many people are very dedicated in, the in terms of fighting against doping. I think about, I think, especially um, uh, anti-doping organization. But I think we also have to, bri to, 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 make, to, to build bridges between anti-doping organization and police. And the, the third and last aspect is we have to elaborate uh, intelligence. Because if we want to fight properly and effectively this kind of issue, we have to understand how it works. And this is, to date, definitely not the case. Um, this is um, you have the end of my presentation. I just would like to know that it's, gonna, it's one of the la last presentations I will do because I'm leaving Interpol this summer. And it was a great experience for me. 
and uh, especially working with the Ministry of Health and Ronnie, who is here, and um, who is very dedicated in this area. And I'm sure that uh, Israel, you can be sure that Israel is one of the most supportive and, uh, and the best contributor in terms of uh, 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 fighting against uh, PED trafficking. Thank you very much.